Hi friends, welcome to Morning Elms. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the records I picked up in January, 2023. Hey everyone, Kyle here. Thanks for joining me today. If you're new to the channel, thanks for watching. In this channel, we talk about music and I kind of showcase my music collection, whether that's vinyl records, cassette tapes, CDs, I collect a lot of different formats. So thanks for joining and please consider subscribing. So January was a pretty good month for me. I got some cash for Christmas, some gift cards to some of my favorite local record stores, and you know I had to spend that as soon as possible. So let's go through some of the things I picked up um, in January. The first album I want to talk about is by Lori Saxel, and this came out in 2021, and it's called The Blue of Distance. Um, it's got a really cool write-up on the back here, and let me just read it for you. I wrote the first half of this music in the summer, far away from home, surrounded by lakes, rivers, and moss-covered forest floors. I was in love with the water and wind and people around me. I wrote the second half in winter on a frozen island in the middle of Lake Superior, surrounded by ice and gray as far as I could see. I looked at videos and photos from my summer and tried to remember what it had felt like to be there. So this is a really cool record. I love the presentation. I, I just love the design. Um, the cover is beautiful. And then the art design on the back is lovely as well. Um, but this is sort of like a ambient record um, with some electro acoustic instrumentation, um, modern classical, but essentially a lorry took some samples of wind and water and processed them. And there's also um, analog synthesizers that accompany these organic instruments, such as violin, viola, cello, clarinet, flute, oboe, bassoon. Um, so you have a mix of these synthetic and processed elements with those um, acoustic instrumentation, and the result is just really beautiful, meditative, peaceful music. Um, I love how they process those sampled sounds. Um, and just the idea of the pulsing sound of water and wind and how to replicate that, how to form a relationship with those elements and also those chamber elements. Just very gorgeous stuff. So if you're interested in a lot of ambient drone, neoclassical, modern classical stuff, I would totally recommend this record. Again, this is a Lori Saxel, The Blue of Distance. Um, I found this in my, if you see here, in my local record store, they have a fantastic section called Weirdo, which I, I love. And that's where you find a lot of experimental music, um, including ambient, avant-garde, um, all types of different music that is a, a, a little more out there. So a cool section that I often, uh, I often peruse. And then the next record I picked up was Brown Rice by Don Cherry. And this is just a really, really cool spiritual jazz, jazz fusion, jazz funk almost album from, I believe it was originally released in either 1975 or 1977. I've seen different dates on different sources, so I'm not too sure. But Don Cherry plays the jazz trumpet. There are four pieces on this and they range in style. The intro, Brown Rice, is a little uh, a little more out there. You have, I think it's Don whispering Brown Rice. And then a lot of just kind of weird, it sounds like there's some wah wah out bass going on. Um, but then, of, of course, a lot of other jazz instrumentation. And then it, it can get a little more funky and into that more jazz fusion with uh, like the second track. And within those, you have some nice jazz piano, some drums. And of course, Don's just very beautiful jazz trumpet solos. Very nice playing on this. And the last track is super interesting. Um, I believe it's Don playing trumpet, but it almost sounds like a synthesizer. It's like a very distorted trumpet sound. I I'm not sure what's making, what's creating the sound, but it's, it's really awesome. Um, totally, totally recommend this one. Very out there, very funky. It came, this is a, I believe a 2022 reissue. It came on some nice brown vinyl. Um, 
yeah, just great stuff. I'm stoked to have this. If you're into jazz artists like Pharaoh Sanders, um, this is something you could you should definitely check out. I mean, if you're into Pharaoh Sanders, you probably know about this already, but but just a little more experimental and uses some other sounds um, from Eastern Asia. There's just some other world music influence on this. I, I, I kind of hate that term, but I, for back, lack of a better term, I'll, I'll use that. Um, but yeah, beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. This is uh, Don Cherry, Brown Rice. Check this one out, stoked to have it in the collection. And next up, I grabbed the 1975's latest album, Being Funny in a Foreign Language. And I am just really, really enjoying this one. If I had to go back, I have a video which I can link above, which is my best of 2022, my favorite albums of 22, 2022 list. If I had to redo it, I would put this on there. But unfortunately, I just I didn't get a chance to listen to this one before I made that list. Um, and this is just gorgeous. If you like a lot of pop rock from the 80s, maybe some like Peter Gabriel, um, Kate Bush or, um, you know, other new wave bands, stuff like that. This will be right up your alley. They've had music I've liked before, but this is the first project I'm fully standing behind and loving. Um, just gorgeous songs about love. Matt can write very sarcastic lyrics as well that kind of, kind of just briefly reference current topics of the day. But also, a lot of these songs are about love and longing, um, beautiful bass grooves, and wonderful, like, reverb on isolated drum hits that I just love. Just just gorgeous stuff. Catchy hooks. We uh, the, the hooks cannot be understated. This thing, just phenomenal songwriting, phenomenal pop songwriting. But check out the 1975 being funny in a foreign language. And I should mention it as well that there's some beautiful, beautiful string work on this thing. So if you're into that, that chamber pop, I've seen the term sophista pop applied to this and, and other bands I like, but you know, the kind of seems a little pretentious, but you know, just maybe a, a little bit more of a thoughtful approach to pop music. This thing is excellent. The 1975 being funny in a foreign language. Check it out. And next I want to talk about Eberhard is this, uh, someone in the comment let me know if you're familiar. I don't know how to pronounce the name. I think it's either, it's either Weber or Weber, but this is Eberhard Weber Weber, The Colors of Chloe. And this is just a fantastic album. I discovered Eberhard um, a few years back and I've been really into ECM style jazz. This of course is from the famous ECM jazz label. There's um, four tracks on this. Just beautiful, hard hard to classify what kind of music this is because yes, at the end of the day, it's jazz, but there's a lot of other classical music elements going on here. Eberhard plays the double bass, um, but there's also some like beautiful piano playing by Rainier Brunenhaus, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous album. There's some motifs and themes that are, are revisited throughout certain tracks and they're just beautiful. There's piano, there's the double bass, of course, there's ocarina, there's the fugelhorn. There's so many different, so much different instrumentation on this and it just creates a very lush, beautiful experience. Some long tracks that you could just get lost in. It feels like spring and the cover kind of kind of looks like spring too. It's just very beautiful and lush. So if, if you're interested in Third stream jazz, jazz fusion, ambient jazz, all the above. Check this this out. Um, people that are interested in the Don Cherry record that I just mentioned before would probably like this too. Just just great stuff. Check it out. And Eberhard's got some other great albums as well. So it, it's worth going through the discography off the top of my head. You got Silent Feet. I think there's one called Passengers that I really enjoyed, but I'm going through the discography and this is the one that's just popped out the most to me. So check this out, stoked to have it. And then we have Callie Malone with Living Torch. This came out last year, didn't quite make my top albums of the year list, but I still wanted to, to buy it because I just, I, I thought it was really interesting. And Callie makes these, there's two pieces in here ranging from between 15 minutes and I think the second one is 18 minutes. 
but there's synthesizers, there's trombone, there's bass clarinet. It's very droney. It's a, it's a drone, dark, ambient, modern, classical album. So you really have to be into this sort of thing, but I like throwing it on and just kind of relaxing. Although this one, it can be kind of unsettling at times, going into that dark ambient sound. Um, just really cool stuff though. I'm not sure if the organic instruments like the, um, the trombone and the bass clarinet are processed through any synthesis, but that would make sense if that's some, a technique they chose to use on this. Um, really cool stuff. So if you're into drone, check this one out. Very cool. Callie Malone, Living Torch. And then lastly, I picked up Mary Halverson. And this is Amerilis. I, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. This came out last year as well in 2022. She's a jazz guitarist, but there's a, a whole crew of musicians on this. Uh, kind of has a, a big jazz band feel but um, very experimental. Mary's guitar playing is very inter interesting. I've only given this like one or two plays through. It's kind of a tough listen. So this definitely wouldn't be everyone's cup of tea. Um, so a little challenging, but I, I wanted to check it out because I, I saw this on a lot of best of jazz albums from 2022. And I bought this through Bandcamp. So I, I like to support jazz musicians when I can. Um, and this is just really cool. Uh, uh, I'll have to sit with it a little longer to see how I feel because like I said, it was, a, it was a little bit of a challenging listen, but sometimes, you know, three or four or five listens into it, something clicks and it be, can become one of your favorite albums. So we'll see if that happens, but if not, you know, I have no problem taking a chance and supporting a, a talented artist, uh, like Mary Halverson. So Check this one out if you get a chance. And I, I like kind of just keeping up with, I feel like in in the online community, there's a lot of discussion about some of the classic jazz albums from the 50s, 60s, 70s, so on, which totally valid. They're all really wonderful and important and blaze, trailblazing, but there is an alive, there is an alive jazz scene going on to this day and I want to make a, resolu a resolution of mine to pay attention to these new releases. I feel like I've been kind of doing that with um, artists like Micaiah McCraven and um, Jeff Parker and the, the International Anthem record label has kind of been turning me on to some new artists, but I want to make it a goal of mine to pay attention to newer jazz artists and um, kind of give kudos to that scene when, when I like stuff. Um, because I think it's important and, and it's important to pay attention how different genres evolve. And there's, there's so much, there's so much interesting techniques these days and things you could do with not only like synthesis with making music in the box, like through a computer and then mixing that with organic instruments or even just doing things totally organically or digitally, you know, there's just the opportunities are endless. And that's what's so exciting about music. And I love paying attention to new releases. So sorry for that tangent, but just wanted to talk about um, Mary Halverson. Check this out if you have a chance and, and try to pay attention to some newer jazz artists because I think it's a, it's a worthwhile pursuit. All right, everyone, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Again, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I also put out content on Instagram, at Morning Albums and kind of showcase through shorter form videos, more of my record CD cassette collection. So follow me there if you have a chance. Otherwise, I hope everyone is doing well. Let me know if you scored anything cool in January of 2023 or whenever you're watching this video. I'd love to hear in the comments. Thanks everybody and take care.